Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Quincy with a remarkable story about how a local school district was able to redistrict, rebuild, revitalize, and all of these things within a matter of just a few years. There are school districts all over Illinois that know they need new buildings, that know they need to be revitalized, and fail in doing so because it's very hard to get those referenda passed. But in Quincy in 2014, they passed the referenda, the bond issue, they got going on it, and they are darn near finished here only about four years later. Well, Mr. Webb, as superintendent, you came in at the time after that referenda was passed, and it was up to you to make this project work. And here we are, which is four years later, and it's almost completed. It is. It's been a great team effort. I mean, the whole community is very proud of these new schools, uh, renovation of our high school, and everything that took place. Uh, and uh, the school board uh, dove in, and they've been behind this, and uh, the community. It's just been a it's just been a great thing for Quincy. Talk about a rush up job, though. I mean, you had ten K through five schools. Some of them were as old as 1904. They were built in 1904. Ten, ten buildings now that you're going to consolidate into five brand new schools, and we're looking here at Colonel George. J. Isles Elementary School. This is one. But these five schools had to be planned, built, and ready to go within just a matter of a few years. It's remarkable. Yeah. Uh, you know, originally the plan was to spread it out a little further, but, uh, you know, the board and I thought that that would be chaotic for mm -hmm. uh, quite a few years. If we could condense that to a couple years, that's the best bet. So we opened Lincoln Douglas in uh, 2000, August of 2017. This year we opened two schools, and then next August we opened two more elementary schools. So our, actually our oldest school in the district, our oldest elementary school, will be two years old next August. And uh, so we're going to start calling Lincoln Douglas our old elementary school. So, And it's only two years old. Every elementary student in the Quincy district will be in a new school. Everyone. Brand new school. That's yes. And we're very proud of that and the community is very proud of that. What will you do with the old buildings? Uh, you know, right now there's been a couple of them that have been torn down. Part of Baldwin's been torn down, Monroe, to put the new schools in their location. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, four of our new schools or three of our new schools went on brand new uh, lots of land that we purchased. So the other schools, uh, uh, right now the plan is to uh, sell those schools in auctions and uh, mm -hmm. stuff throughout the next couple of years. On the planning on this project, you had to, first of all, you had to say, okay, now where do we want these schools to be located? And that largely depends on where is their property available to build a new school. So not only did you have to redistrict and figure out where you wanted them to be, but you had to find the property. You had to know whether it was buildable, you know, you could build on it, whether it was available, whether you could afford it, and then start the whole design process around the property. Remarkable. Absolutely. And uh, all of these are designed, we wanted like 15 acres of land, which in a city, I mean, Quincy's a city, so it's tough mm -hmm. to find 15 acres of land. Uh, for the green space, for the parking lot, for the playgrounds for kids, and for the 70,000 foot square facility, yeah. uh, we needed a big lot of land. And uh, so, uh, and part of uh, Quincy has caves, so uh, we didn't really want to build on top of the caves. Right. The board was concerned about that. So yeah, finding the lots of land and, uh, and then building, uh, it was quite yeah. a process, quite a team effort. You've made it possible for us today to get a tour of three of these schools from the principals that are inside. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to go in Colonel George Isles Elementary right now and get that tour. Okay? Absolutely. We're oh, very, it's a great school. Let's go. Duck. Okay, Cindy Crow. First year's principal, right? At Isles First Elementary. First year here in this K-5. Okay, you've been a principal before, mm -hmm. but, but not K through five. No. And here we are in Isles Elementary. These new schools are really different, aren't they? They are. I mean, they're formulated differently, they're shaped differently, but you think differently too, don't you? We do, and that's purposeful. So right here, we're in the really the heart of the school. It's mm -hmm. where teachers and students are learning together. And we have created really a heart for each grade level. So this is first grade. So you'll notice that there are the first grade classrooms. Mm -hmm. And so they can learn independently of each other in the classrooms. But then they also come together here in this middle area. Mm -hmm. So you can see like they're um, doing a hundred 
collections for the 100th day of school well, there. Let's walk over that and way a little bit. They've done that together as a whole pod. Okay, they so set goals together. They learn they do. together. Okay, so all the first graders will work on this project together. Yes. That means teachers have to work together. That's right. Are they good at that? They love it. <laughs> we they? just did a staff survey in January mm -hmm. and um, two of the really big pieces that came out is that they feel like they have a voice on their team and they feel like they, when they come together with their team, mm -hmm. they leave better. So yeah, like the, definitely they have formed families here with students and staff. How many teachers would be in this first grade area here? Is it three classrooms? Four, four, four classrooms. classrooms, four general how, education. How many children generally to a classroom? Uh, 25. 25, so you have about 100 first graders. Mm -hmm. And this is where they congregate at times. They can, they can all squeeze in here, all 100 They can, okay. very comfortably. I've got lots of pictures of it. Is that right? Okay, yeah. now what about the other grades? Is it, does it also look Looks like this? just like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different learning opportunities at different grade levels. So um, three through five, one of the, grade, one of the classrooms will be a co-teaching classroom. Mm -hmm which has two teachers in it and then some of the students have special education IEPs but it's a general education um, setting two teachers getting to work together in collaboration mm -hmm. um, we have accelerated classrooms in um, fourth and fifth grade so two of the four are kind of specialized when you get up higher in those grades mm -hmm. okay I noticed you have boys and girls restrooms mm -hmm. and wash areas here and each of those pods also has that yes. as well so so this is sort of identical to what the fifth graders would have exactly for so Same think how they're getting used to it and as yeah. they move up forward they're going to use it's, it in it's different not, ways it's no big change for no. them they're familiar with mm -hmm. it. Now, okay, te back to teachers again. Teachers, did they always have to work together? No. No, they didn't. They could, they, they were there, oh, they were autonomous in there with their group of kids, with their homeroom or whatever that was. Uh -huh. And, but now it's it's not only suggested but it's essential that they yeah, come together and is. work on projects. We are physically set up for that and we also set up a master schedule that gives them a common planning time as a team, an hour long every week mm -hmm. that they can come together to collaborate and build these opportunities together. Mm -hmm. Tell me if you can, and there's probably no numbers to support this yet because you're just getting started, but how does this help the kids, the, the 25 kids in there and the 25 kids in there and the 25 kids, how does it help them by, by being able to well, do this? When you look at best practice in educational research, collaboration is there. Like that is one of the big factors mm -hmm. that indicate kids are going to be successful. It's needed out in the work world and mm -hmm. we're like building that every year that they're here. Um, as an intermediate, previous intermediate principal, uh, we would get kids who came from a lot of different schools in fourth and fifth grade and it was like starting over again. So having a school that's K-5, which is new mm -hmm. in Quincy, we're not transitioning and starting over with kids. We're really excited. This year, we had to get to know everybody, but next year, we're going to know them all except for the kindergarten. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> so, and they'll be the newbies, right? Right. And of, course, of course, kindergartners are new no matter what, that's so right. I mean, they, they have to learn the ropes anyway. Yeah. Right? Hey, take me into the cafeteria area there because it's very interesting how you all named these schools, and you've got some banners mm -hmm. in there that sort of describe Yeah, that, that. was my idea. Okay. <laughs> Cindy, it's getting noisy because we're getting near the cafeteria That's and it's right. almost lunchtime. <laughs> but people will notice, and I'm noticing here, that there are these triangles and they're different colors and they make their way throughout the walls and up to each room. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It's very purposeful. Like the design of the school, including colors and and pictures and so on are, are all very purposeful in helping the system. So in this case, these colors represent a leaf from the Tree of Isles, and every grade level has a leaf and a color. So you'll notice they're all starting to mix here because we're all together in these big open areas. Oh, ah, okay. The pod we were just in was orange. It was orange. So if I'm a first grader, I know my color is orange, mm -hmm. my leaf, so I can follow the orange and it will lead me right back to my home. Okay, perfect. And, and like that, they're a leaf on the tree and that's the, they were the uh, white oak leaf, I yes, think, right? Yes, you're right. Okay, beautiful, big new space. You can't help but notice these banners. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? Our school is named after Colonel George J. Isles. He was a Tuskegee Airman. And so as they named the schools, we started researching like, who's this guy and what does he mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and how is he important? And we found that the Tuskegee Airmen kind of lived by some basic principles. These are those principles. They're really great principles to guide a school. These are our school call outs. On uh, two days a week, we have a morning meeting, a celebration meeting, and we teach to one of these. The Is kids right? teach, not the adults. Is that right? So, so everybody in Isles School knows who, who, who Mr. Isles oh, was. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. We, 
He's not living, but if he were living, he would have had his 100th birthday this year. So Is we had a right? big celebration. He'd be very honored as well, wouldn't he? Yeah. And he's from Quincy. He's a Quincy native. In fact, all of your all of your schools are named after Quincy they natives. They are. In fact, his sister and other family members came back for the dedication. Mm -hmm. And that was really a neat experience to get to meet her and hear stories about him. Hey, okay, i got to ask you this. As long as we're in the cafeteria here, has the dietary issues changed in the new school, or are they still the same? Still the same, still like same? we have certain, you know, criteria that we follow, and um, so we, we always follow what we, you know, did in the past. Mm -hmm. um, what we had to do is figure out, it's a really open space, and it's a really visible space, yeah. but it's lunchtime, and that's when kids have some freedom. So right. we really had to work hard on those systems of, you know, how do we do business in the cafeteria in a respectful and, and organized way. Mm -hmm. So we didn't even start out with it like this. We started out with the tables going a different way. But, you know, growth mindset. Live and, like, live hey. and learn. Hey, well, you know, th this, is, this works for now and you may change it up again. That's right? right. That's right. Okay, one more question for you before we go to another school. You've never been a, a principal at K through five before. You've been a principal in, in other areas. Um, is was this a difficult transition for you, and also for other teachers who are thrown into new situations? Has it been a difficult transition? Oh, absolutely. I, I think it would be dishonest to say it wasn't difficult. Um, there's some grief that comes with saying goodbye to where we were and what we did. There's some excitement about coming back together. We have. Um, staff work rooms and there are whiteboards and so one of the things on them right now is what do I love about aisles and everybody's been putting things up there and somebody had written like getting to create new beginnings so we were able to do that but creating systems from scratch is really difficult yeah. when you're on the fly like when you're there with the kids right. um, we didn't know a lot of the kids coming in because of the boundaries being moved around so we had to learn those kids fast sure. and develop those relationships with And working with, with new teachers, fast. too. Absolutely. You're not with the same work crew that you were with before. I'm not, and many of them are in different positions now, different teaching mm -hmm. positions. Yeah. Takes a lot of resilience, a lot of yeah. grit to, to persevere yep. through it. Yep. Um, this is year one, right? Mm -hmm. After year two, all of the transitions will be made, yep. right? And everybody will be where they're going to be. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to do in two years. Boy, it is. That is the truth. Yeah. Thanks. Uh -huh. Well, Melanie, we didn't see a classroom at the other school. Are these classrooms very similar? The new schools, the classrooms look the same? Yes, they're very similar in their design, so mm -hmm. yes. The first thing I notice is that the configuration of these desks, you know, I'm an old fashioned guy when I was in school, you know, we were in rows, you know, one behind mm -hmm. the other. But this is this is different. What's what's the goal here? Well, really um, in today's education, the majority of the time we see our students grouped in clusters of desks, and so a teacher um, can design that. Kids might change their seating arrangement, but it's mostly so they can work together mm -hmm. to build that collaboration piece starting. This is a first grade classroom, so even starting in first grade, where they work together as a team and they do a think aloud or they share with their mm -hmm. neighbor and share their thoughts. Yeah, what are, the, what are the crowns? There's a crown on every yes. desk here. <laughs> well, today is not only Valentine's Day, but today is the 100th day of school. So I notice on those crowns, it actually says 100 this one days. Around. Yes, yeah, let's see. Right there. So it looks like the boys and girls that are at lunch <laughs> maybe left their crowns in a safe mm -hmm, spot. Mm -hmm. But during so the day, they've been wearing them. day of school, yes. so everybody is celebrating it in a different way. Some of the teachers have shirts on. Right. I saw some as one of the teachers in the hall. She was acting like an old woman. She's had a hundred <laughs> days, you know. You've come on a wonderful day. Yeah, I, we really did. Now, before we leave this classroom, th there's there's technology. Yes. Everywhere, it's extended. No matter how mm -hmm. how old a student you are, you've got some ability sure. here with technology. So don't you? each classroom is equipped with either a polyvision board or a smart panel. This mm -hmm. one is a smart panel and mm -hmm. so it really brings um, the the instruction to life and, and provides so much visual um, instruction for kids. It connects with our math program. We also have science opportunities on here. They util mm -hmm. utilize it for writing. So it's just really a great way to get kids, kids engaged. And actually the kids can come up here and they can work on a problem themselves, can't they, if the teacher yes. wants them to? Yes, they sure uh -huh. can. 
which is really nice to see that authentic. So if they share their writing here on the Elmo, so mm -hmm. even if they shared it here, then it would be projected onto yeah. the smart panel. So and this is a first grade room. This is a for first grade classroom, Remarkable. yes. So Remarkable. the uh, technology and then each classroom is assigned a certain amount of iPads or, or um, laptops, mm -hmm. so which is nice. And our teachers all yeah. have a laptop. Speaking of technology, let's go to the media center. Okay. Melanie, I noticed that we're going to three, four, five. Yes. And I'm not sure what that color is. It's it's a it's a bluish green. Yes, like a teal. A teal. What, yes, what does three, teal. four, five mean? So three, four, five. The three, four, five means this is the third, fourth, and fifth grade neighborhood part of the school. Oh, okay. So so if you're in one of those grades. Your, your neighbors with the other kids in that yes. age group, huh? Yes, okay. and within and, there we have pods for grade levels. Yes. Okay, and we saw a pod uh, in yes. the first school, in the first grade we saw a pod, mm -hmm. and there were, I think, five classrooms off of that pod. Okay, and this school is conform, conform, conform mm -hmm. that same way. Yes, we have four classrooms per grade level. Mm -hmm. yes. We're in the, what, multimedia center? or? It's called the Instructional Media Center. Instructional Media yes, Center. Yes, so IMC. Mm -hmm. And classes take place in here, or kids just come in here to read or to work on a computer, sometimes mm -hmm. on their own, I guess? It's a multi-purpose class um, area, so mm -hmm. they come here for digital literacy lessons that they will see here on a smart panel. Uh, they come here to check out books, to mm -hmm. be read to. Let's just see what happens here. Yes. Oh, okay, and it gives them a choice and they can come in here or the teacher can come in here and start playing instructional videos or whatever. I'm going to get rid of that because it's so loud, okay? But anyway, you get the, you get the yes. point, right? Yes. Um, also, I notice these charging stations over here. Mm -hmm. These yes. are huge. I guess you can put a lot sure. of laptops in there at one time. Sure. Huh? This, this particular mobile lab um, has 33 touchscreen mm -hmm. iPads, uh, or excuse me, laptops. So mm -hmm. touchscreen laptops, and they could also be turned into tablets. So they'll be used for um, typing, they'll be used for research, and to go along with the digital literacy lessons. Yeah. And, and it, in fact, there's still some old fashioned books here yes. too. <laughs> so kids still love books, don't they? Absolutely, so we wanna give them uh, lots of options, mm -hmm. whether it be an actual text in their hand or through um, electronic devices, mm -hmm. so digital literacy. So yes, they still check out books in here and they come once a week and yeah. have a lesson. So, and yeah. then our staff meets in here. So, mm -hmm. and then I don't know if you noticed that, but yes. All right, we actually have classrooms. Well, I don't see any now, but um, earlier this week, our fifth grade students and their teachers had all their lab materials set up for some inquiry-based ah, science okay, lessons. that makes sense, that makes sense. Nice so you don't need a science lab. You've got plenty of space there, and there's water available if they need it, Absolutely. and a lot of storage as well. Absolutely. Okay. Now, one last thing. We haven't seen a gymnasium okay. yet. Can we see that? Yes, we All sure right. can. Let's go that way. Okay. Melanie, do, do elementary school kids still take phys ed? They do, and they're very excited about that. They come four or five times a week, depending on their grade level. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they also come in the morning. And this is probably the only place big enough for everybody to get together, right? Right, and it serves as our tornado shelter, um, safe place. And you're right, they do come in here every day to gather. And this is a place where their teacher either picks them up or they're in here for a morning meeting, kindergarten through mm -hmm. fifth graders, all in one place together. You mentioned a tornado safe place. Yes. So this place was built like a fortress. I imagine this place is really was, was put yes. together. It's, yeah. it's definitely a safe place for all of us to come yeah. if we yeah. would need to. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks for the tour. Thank you. Love being here <laughs> with you. So thank you. Thank you. Todd Moore, a long time ago, you gave us a tour of Baldwin School because you were a student here and you were working on the design yes. of the new elementary school. That was before a lot of Baldwin got torn down. Right. Now, the Baldwin name is going to live. Parts of the old school are going to live, but as we can see, a lot of it has been just torn out and it's going to be all brand new, isn't it? That's correct, yes. What's it Absolutely. been like working on this project? It's been exciting. It was a challenge, but exciting. And that's really uh, an architect and an engineer's dream to have a challenge. Mm -hmm. And this certainly was a challenge because we kept uh, a majority of the building or half, about half the complex. And so to keep things running 
uh, and then to build a new school. And even with the students that were here for even a year during construction, it was a challenge. Yeah, we're getting a look at these guys are working now. I guess what they're doing is building new rooms, right? That's Inside correct. an old shell, they're building new rooms? Absolutely. This part here is the, uh, is the, is the old part. But as you see, just beyond us is where the new part starts. Mm -hmm. So the old round room is really when you enter the new area is where the building starts. Well, let's go that way and take a look. Absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. okay Todd, in the new section. It's actually starting to look like a school. It's starting to, this is yes. K. This is three through five on this side? Um, it's, three, this is three, actually four, uh, three, four, and five on this side, uh -huh. K, one, and two on the other side. Okay. Yes. And it, you can see it's already color-coded. Starting. And, and the yeah. kids know what color they belong in, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's part of the deal. Yes. Um, and you, and there's a lot left to do here, but we're, actually we're not that far away. I mean, this school is going to be ready pretty soon. It's, yeah. It, May, uh, the end of May is the yeah. completion time. Yeah. It's starting to look like a school. You can see there's a classroom in there, and it's, it's mm -hmm. outfitted already. Yep. Um, need some furniture. Furniture, but other than that, it's it's doing pretty good. Other than that, it's pretty much ready to go. So this is a strange um, project for you to take on, T keeping the auditorium and the gym and the cafeteria and adding all the classroom space. Right. And it's got to be all updated, newly designed classroom space stuck in between these old ancient rooms. Yeah. It's pretty weird, isn't it? It is weird, and that's and again that was part of the challenge. But uh, fortunately, the the parts of the building that remained were actually in really good shape. The parts that came down were actually in the worst shape, so it worked out ideally as far as what to take down and then to build on new. Mm -hmm. So um, part of the process too was we did uh, renovate the corridors, uh, we added air conditioning in the auditorium, we added air conditioning in the gymnasium, mm -hmm. we renovated some bathrooms on the existing side. So now when it's all done, we have this great new building, plus we have a nicely renovated uh, existing space. Now in between, this is three through five over here, and K1, two over there, mm -hmm. in between, are the safe rooms. That's and correct. Are, I guess there are two or there are the one or two. It, there's not... actually two. Uh -huh. uh, it'll stay open. Well, you can see right through, um, but it's actually kind of divided into th the three through five will be here. The K2 will be over there. Mm -hmm. So, but it, the entire space is a hardened space uh, with precast panel walls, a concrete roof, and then all the things that are necessary like the restroom facilities that you have to have inside the space, the appropriate ventilation, uh, emergency power and emergency generation. So it uh, it serves the same purpose as the other the newer schools that the, the yeah. gymnasiums offered. Yeah, they, uh, I understand that the, the schools, those schools, those new schools where they started from scratch, they actually built the schools around those gymnasiums because those were really heavily heavily forti fortified. Right, they? right. And they really did the same thing here. They built this concrete structure of the tornado safe space mm -hmm. and then kind of went out from there. The challenge was you had to meet up against the new building just right where we walked through the entryway. Mm -hmm. So really a challenge for the construction to really get this in the right spot and then have it marry up with the existing yeah. building was now the this, this area that we're in, this, this is more than a safe space. This actually doubles as sort of like a media center, It's an right? instructional media center mm -hmm. for the kids. That's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. So uh, really a nice, nice ample space. You see a lot of the cabinetry and, and uh, the cubbies for kids. and. And so they'll be when this is furnished uh, at the at the end, it'll be just a beautiful space for the kids to come to. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, there's a lot more to be done, obviously, but uh, it looks like the crews are. The weather hasn't hurt them at all, has it? The no, weather's it's, really. It's been pretty good. We've had some cold snaps, but uh, with everything being under roof, they provide the temporary heat. And they just keep right on going. Mm -hmm. So we're very fortunate to have a good good crew of contractors and throughout the entire Quincy School project. And after, actually, after. local contractors. Weren't local they? contractors, yeah. yes, yeah, general contractors subcontractors, suppliers. We had a lot of material, a lot of labor coming from this mm -hmm. area, which is just great as a, you know, to see as a community. Yeah, yeah. Well, Todd, thank you for your time and thanks for joining us here today. Absolutely. Good luck with Pleasure. the rest of the project. Yeah, yeah. thank you so yeah. much. Well, I hope you learned a lot today. I certainly did about what a community can, community can do when it's committed to building new schools. Five new elementary schools in a period of five years. The one we're standing in here now, Baldwin, is set to welcome students just this August. With another Illinois Story in Quincy, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.
For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.